Today, there are tens of millions of cable customers that have no choice but to pay a monthly uh, fee for the privilege of having a cable box that has changed little in decades and cost consumers an average of $231 a year. When we unlock the box, we unlock competition. We unlock choice. We unlock innovation. This is like the days when a consumer had no choice but to rent their black rotary dial phone from the telephone company. That black rotary dial phone sat in all American homes every month, year after year, decade after decade. Our mothers and fathers rented that phone for $3 a month, 12 months a year, for 40 years. They paid 16, 18, two, 1800, $2,000 to rent. And the telephone company made sure you couldn't go down to a phone store and just buy another phone so you didn't have to rent it. Well, that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about giving consumers an alternative, another way of providing them with the ability to be able to access television. In the 21st century, consumers should be able to choose their set-top box the same way they chose choose their mobile phone. Real sign of what happens to ordinary consumers, not only on their set-top boxes, but their bills. They have no control over what they pay because they are shackled. And we're saying the FCC, liberate consumers, do it now, you have a responsibility. Waiting is a violation of that responsibility. I remember this image of President Reagan saying, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down that wall. <laughs> Chairman Wheeler, unlock this box. So explain to me why when you have a technological revolution that can say to African-American consumers, keep that $231 in your pocket, still get cable, but get more diversity. Because of 20 years, our BET was the only cable channel. Not because there weren't thousands of Bob Johnsons who could have offered divergent voices. It's because the cable system controls <coughs> access. The open internet has helped to counter the effects of massive industry consolidation, allowing for new venues for consumers to access content and writers to tell their stories, including groundbreaking stories that we hadn't seen on network television, like stories about a transgender woman, stories that take place in a woman's prison, or stories told in two languages. Watch. And the Guild would not support this proposal if we thought it would be harmful to content. As creators of intellectual property, WGAW members care very much about concerns of piracy or copyright infringement, and we don't take those concerns lightly. But as the media companies continue to generate record profits, in part due to the growth of a robust online video market, we're confident the FCC's rules won't create the doomsday scenario some are predicting. And it's founding the 96 Act, a bipartisan commitment to competition. And what does that mean? Competition means entrepreneurship. It means diversity. It means free markets. It means growth and innovation. And if you take competition out of the market, you lose all of those things. Good morning. My name is Deshaun Spencer, the founder of Quality TV. It's K-W-E-L-I TV. We're a streaming platform having independent films, documentaries, web shows, and news programming for the global black community. And I'm not only here representing my little baby star who's been around for, for 11 months, but also the 100 plus filmmakers from across, from across the globe who have content on our platform. Of these filmmakers, 9% are of African descent and 50% are black women. Almost all these filmmakers have been in film festivals, they're award winning, but despite that fact, they're less likely to get distribution deals. In fact, filmmakers of color are least likely to get any distribution black women are least likely to get a VC funding. In fact, only black women get about 0.2% of all VC funding. 0.2%. Just gonna let you guys marinate on that for a second. Now, why are there thousands of African Americans, as we found out with the whole idea of Oscars so white, waiting to be seen, waiting to be heard, waiting to be exposed, to the 32 plus million African Americans in this country, the 13 million households, 
They're being locked out because there's not a universal access to content. Then, then wrap up. In 1984, when the Reagan Justice Department wanted to break up AT&T, the telephone monopoly, there were many allegations of all the horrible things would happen if you broke up that monopoly. AT&T said, if you break up the phone monopoly, the Soviet Union will be able to steal all of our state secrets and we will jeopardize the national security and lose the Cold War. <laughs> <laughs> Guess what? We, we unlocked the telephone monopoly and we did not lose the Cold War. We did not lose our security and the world was a much better place because we adopted competition in our phone networks. If you